is there any sort of marked genetic difference between north indians and south indians based on the data no 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 exactly. not at all i should have said that yes, i don't like that that is what everyone would want to know the answer is no absolutely none no. exactly there is a very strong answer to this you must read neeraj rai's works there is no genetic difference between people of north india south india east india west india we are an amalgam and sorry i should have led with this because this is one of the this is another one of those very big hits against the aryan invasion theory yes there is absolutely no difference so what is what all this racist stuff says that north indians are invaders is well it's all made up now for this we have to know uh, something we have to know a few terms just a few terms So what is a? I'll try haplin? my best to understand. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> I am sure you'll understand. So what is a haplo group? So a haplo mm-hmm. group is a group of people who share a common ancestor with certain okay. specific genetic mutations. So it is like a huge extended family. Okay, and there are two types of haplo groups. One is with a Y chromosome, male ones, and mm-hmm. the other with the empty DNA, which is the female ones m t d n so uh, we have a plethora of these these are generally given you know uh, a b c d x y z r kind of names are they are numerical alpha numeric kind of codes because there are so many what we want to know is about the r1 a1 a this haplo group okay. is the well uh, smashing success of genetics and mutation and and uh, succeeding across millennia it has the most number of people today almost a billion people in the world are r1 a1 a okay this r1 a1 a why are we interested in it for our current topic today because it represents indo european people and it represents that group which is being tracked to see did it come from the steppes or from anatolia to india or as uh, somebody called edwin bryant said is there actually an out of india solution is it that it is all these people who went out from here and actually spread their genes and their culture across the intervening spaces and also in europe the r1a1 is so diverse and uh, so widespread in india that it cannot be explained through an injection via some mild migrations in 1500 bce and it has uh, existed for a very very long time there are 50 mutations and downstream markers of where these went these r1 a1 genes so kerala karnataka central india all of tribal population the diversity of r1 a1 in these populations is double that found in european populations and remember diversity leads to origin origin point. yes yeah yeah so what does this make you think obviously that if diversity is so much less amongst europeans and it's so much more in central india in the tribal populations of india in fact across 30% of indian population then it is obvious that we have to look somewhere else that rather than the anatolian theory or the step theory for the origin of r1a1 watch the full episode on wak indian history youtube and spotify